Yes, so I'm supposed to give you my view on uh, how uh, particle physics looks like after a major uh, fact, uh, which is the discovery of a broad angular X-like boson. What? Now, I, I, I apologize for using a page that, uh, that I like, but, uh, you know, it's useful and, uh, and uh, it underlies what I think is a major feature of particle physics, synthesis. Uh, now, to stay in time, 40 minutes, right, I, I, what I do is I pick up one point that I consider uh, important uh, for, for one, for two, and for three, and then uh, I will uh, uh, develop uh, some consideration, uh, perhaps half an hour, on the, on the electroweak symmetry breaking sector. All right? Now, the gauge sector, well, uh, certainly an important question is can QCD ever be solved? Now, the reason for me to get into it is, is because I find uh, especially amazing the, the, the useful interaction that there is between uh, um, how can I say, deep theory and art phenomenology which I summarize here right uh, you know uh, it's amazing how several consideration that came from uh, uh, N equal 4 super young meals uh, at large MC which uh, one may debate uh, how related exactly it is to QCD and how it is not, nevertheless uh, uh, have given rise to methods that people uh, apply concretely to produce uh, crucially useful result in perturbative QCD to compare with the uh, LHC, right? Which is uh, uh, what I have written, oops, I'm sorry, which is uh, what is written here, maximal unitarity methods for uh, NLO and perhaps NNLO calculation of important and highly non-trivial processes by, by passing by, by far more traditional methods uh, based on uh, Feynman diagram calculations. Uh, I don't really have the time to, to, to describe that, but uh, uh, it's really amazing. For example, look at this, right? There are calculation, one loop calculation implemented uh, uh, even in connection with uh, Monte Carlos that, uh, that um, you know, are, are crucial if you want to compare with experiment. For example, W plus phi jets, uh, which uh, means uh, of the order of one million Feynman diagrams. Right? And, uh, and uh, the only way, in fact, to do this calculation is by using this uh, uh, maximal unitarity method, cutting equations and uh, so on and so forth. Or the PT of the third jet in Z plus two jets, uh, again with, uh, you know, showing how important it is that you make first an, 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 an one loop calculation and then you and then you, 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 uh, you, you dress it with the uh, part of shower calculations. Neutrino sector. Well, here, you know, the, the question in neutrino sector are all of experimental nature and are all well known, all well known, with Majoran or Dirac which is the value of the last angle that has not been measured yet in uh, oscillations, uh, which is the center of mass of the neutrinos, which is unknown, right, within some range, whether the spectrum is normal or inverted, whether the ECP violation in the leptons as well, and in fact, even of some interest how many neutrinos there are. Now, the important thing that has happened in the last year is that now we know 
the, uh, even a value for the last uh, for the last uh, unmeasured angle in uh, on neutrino oscillations due mostly to uh, these two reactor experiments. Uh, with the, the, the um, fact that now the collection of the parameters that uh, uh, enter into neutrino oscillation are almost all known except for this phase for which there is only a slight indication for the cosine to be less than zero. Uh, what can one make out of this number? I really don't know. There are many attempts. Uh, but it's a fact that we know all of the numbers now. The flavor sector, the flavor sector. To me, the crucial question is how to interpret the mounting empirical evidence for the Kabibo Kobayashi picture, Mascava picture of flavor and CP violation. Uh, up to a few exceptions. There are two or three pro problems here and there, which whoever I don't have the time to comment upon, uh, and uh, it's not obvious that they are uh, serious. So uh, it's a fact that, uh, uh, in a sense, before the discovery of the Higgs boson uh, has been the most important fact in uh, experimental particle physics, it's a fact that we now know that the Kabibo Kobayashi Mascara picture of flavor and CP violation basically works quantitatively and the question is how to interpret it, how to interpret what's the meaning of it, uh, by which I mean the following. Uh, you know, this is uh, one way to represent uh, the success of the Kabibo Kobayashi Mascara picture, which is uh, you know, customary. You just uh, take the standard model Lagrange and, and you add uh, a bulk of uh, a bunch of operators uh, uh, that do not respect flavor, they, that simply respect uh, gauge invariance, baryon number, and lepton number. And uh, you try to see what's the limit on the coupling that weights uh, any of these operators. And uh, the amazing result, of course, what counts is uh, CI, CI divided by lambda nt squared. So suppose that I take by definition CI equal 1, it's uh, remarkable that you get bounds on this scale, not to disturb the agreement with experiments, with several experiments nowadays, that uh, is, as you see, in the, of the order of hundreds, thousands, ten thousand TVs. Right. And uh, a question that uh, has uh, me keeps bothering me is the following. Aren't we supposed to see new physics related to the Fermi scale? Um, now, so here I repeat the story, right? Uh, as I say, as I say uh, in some cases, if you, if you, if you um, analyze the, the compatibility with experiments, you find that you are bound to have uh, lambdas of the order of 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4 TV, unless some restriction is operative. And the a question which uh, I think is valid for those who think that electroweak symmetry breaking may lead to some new scale is that perhaps uh, it is possible that there is some symmetry which is operative that leads to the presence of coefficients here, psi i, uh, which uh, are small enough that indeed uh, uh, you can live uh, consistently with experiment with a, a, a correction to the standard model Lagrangian of this type with the lambda of the order perhaps of say 3 TV which is the typical scale at which you expect a new strong interacting theory related to the origin of V 4 pi V or perhaps because of loop factor, an effect of this, ty this, this type obtained by the exchange of some new particle with a typical mass at V that interacts weakly, okay? 
So uh, is it possible that, uh, that there is such a mechanism which is operative? And uh, I, uh, I, I think that there is one such mechanism, and this is a result of a detailed analysis, which is based on a, on a symmetry of the standard model Lagrangian, which arises in the flavor sector, in the quark flavor sector, if you consider the limit of massless first and second generation, and also consider the limit in which the third generation has a zero angle with the others, right? which, is a, uh, which is a pretty good ap approximation of reality at the level of a uh, few 10 to the minus 2, and you assume a specific way of breaking it, a kind of minimal breaking uh, it, uh, uh, well, uh, you, you go through the analysis uh, uh, and uh, you, you fit the various data, you fit the various data, and what are, you are supposed to see in this diagram is values of these coefficients, of the various coefficients that enter into the, 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 the fit, uh, scaled by 3TV over lambda square. So the message is that to the extent that in any of these uh, uh, figures, a value of C of order 1 is consistent with the data. Indeed, uh, it is possible that uh, to defend uh, a deviation from the standard model of this type with coefficient of order 1 and with a scale of the order of 4 pi v, of the order of 3 tv. So, uh, Although it's true that flavor uh, has some messages in it, I think that uh, it is still possible that flavor deviation show up uh, at a scale which is related to the electroweak symmetry breaking. All right, so I enter into the uh, real subject of the talk, which is... Uh, um, Electroweak symmetry breaking, and of course here the, the dichotomy is uh, is this one, right? Is it a coronation of the standard model, or is it a great milestone along a path yet largely unexplored? No, this is the question that we would like to answer. Now, uh, well, this I think you all know, right? Uh, um, you know, one normally says that one normally says that. Uh, uh, the Higgs uh, boson is supposed to give masses to all the particles to, the, to, to produce mass. That uh, is actually not true, as shown here, right? As shown here in a, in a, in a, in a, in a remarkable uh, uh, calculation from the, lattice, from the lattice of the masses of the of, uh, of, um, of various uh, uh, particles and. Uh, most of these uh, masses, right, which as you see uh, are uh, reproduced pretty well in this calculation, do not have anything to do with the Higgs, uh, but have to do with the uh, uh, back reaction to QCD forces, which are uh, quantitatively dominant in producing mass to the particle. Uh, but of course we know that, uh, that um, uh, intrinsic mass of elementary quanta indeed come from uh, the Higgs, uh, and uh, they are qualitatively crucial, crucial. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that is, and that is, uh, that is uh, what is emerging. You have, seen, you have seen this graph, I think, the first day. Uh, Gigi Rolandi showed it to you, which uh, shows the level of consistency in the mass of the, of the two experiments. Uh, and uh, you may not have seen this, but it is also compiled by Gigi Rolandi. This is the collection of all the measurements of the, of the different experiments, of the different experiments done uh, right after the, the first announcements. So maybe there are some little changes here and there, but uh, this is a, a pretty striking, uh, um, a pretty striking. Uh, way to show the level of consistency of the uh, various uh, measurements of the various uh, uh, decay uh, uh, modes uh, with uh, a, fit, uh, a fit for uh, sigma divided by sig sigma 
uh, standard model for an X of 125 GV, which is uh, uh, pretty much uh, consistent. So what are the questions? Well, the questions that I think as a next step we need uh, are listed here. Of course, we need to know the quantum numbers, and this is uh, something that the experiment, experimentalists know very well, and that will be done, uh, uh, I think, with significant success uh, uh, in the next month. We need to know the strength of the interaction with all, all the other particles and with itself. We need to know if it is alone or accompanied. We need to know if it is elementary or composite. And finally, last but not least, we need to know if it's natural. Now, how about the couplings? How about the couplings? Well, uh, there is a, a pretty obvious way to parameterize uh, in an effective Lagrangian description uh, the uh, relevant coupling of the X uh, to the various particles with some minimal uh, constraints implemented which have to do with uh, uh, you know, symmetries that uh, we know are, uh, are respected, uh, either gauge symmetry or, or, uh, or um, uh, for example, custodial symmetries and so on and so forth. And uh, you rapidly end up with the conclusion that there are five parameters uh, which are important in an effective description of the couplings of the X to the standard model particle and uh, perhaps a first parameter related to the possibility that the X decay in some invisible modes. And there are four ways to go non-standard. There are four ways to go non-standard. One is that the X can mix with other Xs, with other scalars, uh, and that can affect uh, certainly three of these couplings, uh, the coupling to the vectors, the coupling to the, to the uh, top, which I have, I have written only here because normally it, it, it enters into, indirectly into the coupling to the X, uh, so coupling to the top and the coupling to the bottom, which is normally related to the uh, coupling to the tau in the same way. Uh, it is possible that the X is not an elementary particle. That, of course, uh, will have to do with the scale, if there is any uh, such scale, which is not too far from the Fermi scale, in which case all of the parameters, all of these parameters can be affected. It is possible that, uh, uh, that uh, one has missed, uh, the, you know, there are new uh, states that one misses, for example, X into uh, a pair of dark matter particles, or it is possible that there are new virtual particles in loops uh, that uh, will affect uh, uh, not directly these couplings, but will, uh, will affect these couplings to the, to the gluon and to the photon. Now, uh, one can certainly have significant deviation from the standard model, delta C per C of order 1, but the condition is that uh, new physics must be nearby. Uh, the reverse is not true. In other words, it is not too difficult to conceive, uh, you know, even in uh, significant models, supersymmetric models, or, or whatever, uh, situations in which there is no observable deviation of this coupling from the standard model coupling. But uh, the reverse is not true. But uh, it's true that if you do see a deviation, that uh, definitely indicates new physics relatively nearby. And, uh, and uh, so uh, this, uh, the measurement of this coupling is uh, a crucial, certainly, program of the LHC uh, in the years to come. Uh, the, uh, the way in which uh, one should parameterize the various uh, uh, production rate for the various uh, you know, decay modes is uh, pretty obvious and is very well defined, is trivial. And uh, in general, you may think of a situation in, in which there is 1 plus 5 plus 1 gamma invariant effective parameters. It is defendable to consider the case in which there are fi five parameters because you take Cb equals C tau or four parameters. So it's clear that one will need uh, a collection of uh, of uh, uh, analysis and experimental results. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, one can uh, see already, uh, say, in, 
you know, something like a, a year from now, some significant measurements. Of course, uh, to go to precision measurement, you will have to wait for the LHC and uh, an educated guess done by experimentalists them themselves for the sensitivity at 14 TV at, and 300 in the Fentoban, which will not be the end of the story, uh, might lead to measurement uh, with this precision. And in fact, people now think that you know, by going to, for example, an Aptoban, one will be able to go down to 5% five, five here or perhaps 10, 15% here. Uh, apropos of what I said in the, one of the fir very first uh, pages, uh, it will be important that uh, uh, QCD uh, prediction be improved uh, uh, because, as you see here, uh, there are in the various channels sort of theoretical uncertainties at the level that is indicated here, right, coming either from, uh, from uh, scale variation, that is to say incomplete calculations, not so complete calculation, or from... Uh, um, PDFs and, uh, and the value of alpha S and things like that. So, uh, but uh, as I say, I'm pretty sure that with uh, this, there will be improvements here, so one can hope uh, to precision of the order of 5-10% in some uh, decay modes. Yeah, this is a first example, in fact there are many already in the literature, of a fit in which one takes uh, just two free parameters, CV and CF. Uh, CV is the coupling to the vectors, WW or ZZ, and F is the coupling to all the fermion, TT bar, DB bar, Tau Tau bar, take and equal. And uh, this is uh, a fit done by the experimentalists th themselves, CMS, CMS. And this is a first fit that was done uh, for CMS and Atlas together and as you see uh, if you rescale properly the, the variables there is pretty much consistency and uh, you know, there is a slight deviation at the level of 2 sigma from the standard model uh, not to mention that there is even an island in which uh, the value of the coupling is reversed uh, which uh, was not uh, was missed by the experimentalist if you want so this is something that people will follow and that might uh, indeed, as I said, indicate some new physics. Now, uh, of course, the, 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 the crucial question uh, that drives our belief that uh, uh, there, there may be physics related to the Fermi scale is uh, uh, the issue of the fine tuning, which you, uh, you, you all know by art by now. Uh, uh, if, if, uh, if some mechanism is capable of uh, keeping under control uh, this correction relative to any higher physical scale to which the Higgs boson is possible coupled, that will explain why the great em empirical success of the standard mode does not depend on unknown short distance physics, and this is a goal which uh, is uh, worth uh, pursuing to the point that uh, uh, the, there is a huge list of, uh, you know, most of the, most of the, of the proposals uh, for uh, uh, new physics uh, are related to this problem in a way or another. Of course, you can ignore it, right? But otherwise, uh, all of these, all of these, all of these, uh, these are, you know, all of these are. Uh, suggestion that, 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 are, that are in a way or another a relation to the fine-tuning problem. Of course, you can accept it, right? Uh, after all, fine-tunings exist in nature, in nature, anthropic selection, the multiverse, uh, the many uh, string theory vacuum, and so on and so forth. But uh, that is the picture. As far as I can tell, I would like to discuss with you what is the situation of, of uh, line one. And uh, there are essentially two ways to get around the problem. One is supersymmetry, and the other is uh, uh, the issue of the Goldstone boson, which uh, you know, is, is a, a generic way for saying that what really acts to counteract the, 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 the correction 
due to the loop uh, in the standard model is uh, heavy composite particles, which composite fermions, heavy composite fermions, heavy fermions, with couplings that are related by symmetry to this coupling in such a way that you do get this effective zero. Now, uh, the, uh, of course, uh, nothing has been seen so far, so uh, it is totally uh, natural to worry, uh, to ask whether uh, we should not worry or, or not. Uh, you know, there is no theorem here, right? But to me, this page still offers the driving criterion, so let me discuss in detail what is the situation with respect to uh, the two cases. Uh, uh, since, as I say, this is the crucial uh, thing, uh, you know, it, it, uh, for me it is uh, absolutely uh, essential that one focuses on the configuration of particles that play a role in leading to that cancellation. But by which I mean, and that in fact uh, you know, is an attitude that I've, I've been taken since after lab, which showed no supersymmetric particle at the C scale, okay? Uh, that is to say, even before the LHC, for me, uh, this uh, configuration of supersymmetric particle is the crucial configuration to study. Uh, the Xenos have a mass in this typical range uh, because they affect the Z mass at the three level or the X mass at the three level. The stops and this bottom left, because they are strongly coupled to the X system, they affect the, 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 the X mass through one loop correction, and we see the typical range in which I expect them, uh, say, allowing 10% tunings, for example, and the gluino as well, since the gluino affects the stop masses and indirectly uh, is capable of, dri of, of dri driving up the masses of the of these particles too heavy. So, uh, as I say, these particles at their naturalness limit, right? Now, uh, other uh, um, gauge partners uh, uh, are not really constrained by this kind of, uh, kind of argument. So, what they may or may not be around here. One normally expect, expect them to be uh, below the, the gluino mass, but uh, it's true that they are not much constrained. So this, to me, is the crucial configuration. And notice that there is no reference to the, to the yes, notice that there is no reference to the uh, first generation squarks. Uh, whereas, on the contrary, the most important limit that comes from, uh, from uh, uh, LHC at the moment uh, are relevant in the case in which uh, this uh, reaction, which are the reaction that are uh, uh, most, uh, that have the, the biggest cross-section, have a quark in the initial state, right? Uh, for example, gluon quark that goes into gluino quark, quark quark that, go, that gives a pair of quarks, or a, or a quark, quark bar, meaning that these limits, which are significant, as you see, at the order of 1, 1.5 TV, in other words, one is invading these areas here, right, uh, um, are valid for the first, or if you want, the second generation indirectly because of flavor constraints, but not for the third. The stop and the bottom are not constrained by this configuration, so it becomes crucial to know what the experimentalists have been able to, are been able to do, have been able to do, are able to do to look for uh, stops and bottoms. So the first. Uh, this uh, is a message that experimentalists uh, have been uh, receiving in the past year, so they, have made a, they are making a big effort, and these are, are important results, uh, which essentially say that to the extent in which you study a, a decay mode which, in which what counts is the third generation, stops and, and bottoms, either real or virtual, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as, you see, as you see it, it here, the limits are uh, really uh, comparable. It is unlikely that there is a gluino below 900 GeV. Okay, I think that that is a pretty fair, uh, pretty fair uh, statement, and uh, which means that uh, you know this uh, 
region here is being studied in a significant way. I'll tell you in a second uh, what is my thought overall attitude. Now, stop spares or bottom spares are more difficult, are more difficult because of backgrounds and so on and so forth. Here again, there is, a, there is a, a, an effort and, uh, and uh, as you see here, uh, by studying stop spare production, which decay into top uh, neutralino, there is an area which is uh, excluded. Uh, uh, this is the mass of the, of the chi-1, which, as I said, might go up to, say, 200 GV, right? Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this is an area which is excluded. This is uh, more debatable, is more related to the possibility that there are... Uh, so this can be forgotten, right? So there's an area which is excluded, and, uh, you know, there is this fact that at lower uh, uh, energies, uh, the background is so large that the LHC may have problem in exploring this er energy. Probably the, te the Tevatron has to say something here, has or even already said something here. So the general conclusion is that particles at their naturalness limit configuration is being scrutinized. And uh, I don't want to evade the, 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 the one of the most frequently asked questions, which is the one that is written there. Isn't, is supersymmetry the Fermi scale dead? As I said, there is no theorem. Speaking for myself, I would like to see this exclusion region for the gluino extended to something like 1.5 TV, right? And uh, this, is, at the moment, is the excluded region, right? And I would like to see this area uh, uh, also uh, excluded. Or, in fact, or in fact, uh, for me, it would be enough would be enough either to be able to exclude a gluino at this level, a gluino that goes into Titi Bar, eh? not, uh, via the, not, not to the lightest uh, uh, quarks, right? That, that goes via uh, either a real or a virtual stop, or uh, uh, a stop uh, directly searched as, and excluded up to perhaps 500 or, or, or 550 GV allowing for a chi which is heavier than this, okay? So this is the situation as far as the search, direct search super particle is concerned. Now, what about the uh, supersymmetric exposure, right? And here I presume that most of you know the story. Uh, in the MSSM, there is this uh, pretty famous formula which says that if it were not for the radiative correction, uh, the X had to be uh, lower than the mass of the Z. There are radiative correction which make it such that a 125 GeV X is well compatible with the MSSM, but it certainly requires a stop which is in the heavier range. So this is a range of, uh, of values for where you expect the mass of the X depending on the mass of the stops. Right, and depending on this mixing parameter uh, which enters into this formula, right? So this is the range, meaning that, as I said, uh, uh, for sufficiently heavy stops, you, even the MSSM is still in business, but uh, that would require going uh, away from the range of stop masses that I have indicated as being natural. Uh, mm, uh, what about the X-mass then? Uh, I think, as far as I can tell, the simplest possibility is to think of, of the existence of a scalar, to go to the NMSSM, which is around since the 70s. Fayet, I think that the first examples of this uh, discussion of breaking of, of uh, the electroweak symmetry used in supersymmetric models used actually uh, the MSSM, rather the, the NMSSM, rather the MSSM, and the reason uh, for the relevance of this, uh, the existence of this extra S, of this uh, singlet, is that you do get a, a, an extra contribution to the, to the three-level mass of the Higgs, uh, which allows you to go to uh, uh, consistency. This is again the, 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 this is the Higgs mass range 
between 124 and 126, depending on the value of this fixing parameter. And as you sweep versus the stop mass, and depending on this coupling lambda, and you see that if you take lambda sufficiently large, you can get, uh, you can get uh, 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 x masses which are compatible with the observation, even for stops which are uh, uh, relatively light. Uh, so that is a possible way to go. Now, this is not the only way to go. Yes, there is what I call a pessimistic view in quotation mark, because I don't think that uh, uh, you know, nature has sentiments, but we do have sentiments. And uh, uh, my fear with this picture is that if that is true, it may, we may never know. We may never know. And, uh, and uh, the, the, the view which uh, even uh, uh, Ignatius this morning commented upon is this, that uh, you know, perhaps uh, the, the, the scale of, uh, there is some tuning. Uh, we, we, live, we live with some tuning because we don't see flavor physics. We don't see uh, the deviation from the standard model. We don't see CP violation uh, deviating from the standard model. We have not seen supersymmetric particles. And, uh, and uh, uh, one way to consider uh, uh, supersymmetric scalar at MS and supersymmetric fermions related to the Fermi scale. And uh, if you take that point of view, you look into this uh, area here, you see, depending on MS, which is, I repeat, the scale of the scalars, the scale of the scalars, you uh, uh, you, you see how that is consistent with the mass of the Higgs. And uh, based on the radiative correction that I had uh, one or two pages here, based on this uh, radiative correction, essentially, uh, and, you know, more refined things, but essentially that's the logic, you get a range for MS uh, which is compatible with the experimental value of the mass of the Higgs between... Uh, 10 to the 4 t, uh, GV, 10 TV and, uh, and uh, 10 to the 4 TV, right? Now, um, forget about scale SUSI, right? Forget about scale SUSI. This would be compatible with uh, unification because what you move is a multiplet of scalars which fill a complete unified multiplet. So in first approximation, you don't change unification significantly. And uh, you might uh, uh, still uh, uh, explain uh, dark matter using the fermions that are sitting at the Fermi scale. However, it's true that uh, uh, there is no really significant hour, uh, upper bound. And, uh, and uh, you know, as soon as the gluino goes above, uh, say, 3 or 4 TV, uh, and the... Uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, neutralinos and the other, uh, the exinos, the neutral particle are, uh, say, above uh, 500 GV or so, it may be difficult to see that. It may be difficult to see that. So, um, uh, now, people have been interested again into this picture, right, because of this range, that the sort of, uh, you know, now that we know where is the X mass, people see that this range for the mass of the S is not that far. And uh, it's true that there are, see, it's true that there are, uh, uh, that there are examples in which uh, uh, you get a relation between the mass of the fermion and the mass of the scalars, uh, which implies a factor of alpha. Uh, so uh, perhaps this is not uh, an impossible way to see supersymmetry. Now, the other case uh, is the, as I said, the pseudo Goldstone Boson picture. Uh, which is, uh, you know, pretty obvious. You mimic, if you want, the pion of QCD mm, with suitable extension of the symmetries of the theory. And, uh, and uh, here, uh, as I said, what happens is that you have a, you have a composite fermion that uh, provides you the, the cancellation of the divergence. The mass of the fermion uh, enters into the, the, the calculation of the mass of the Higgs, uh, and it grows with the mass of the Higgs, uh, uh, you often have, uh, uh, together with uh, uh, you know, every partner of the standard particle, you have a um, particle 
fer composite fermions of uh, funny charge. And, uh, and uh, here again, uh, the fact that you see an X which is uh, now in a, in a narrow range implies that uh, this fermionic partner are unlikely to be too heavy, probably below, below a TV. You see, the way to read this, this, uh, this uh, plot is that, you see, these are all points which are allowed by the theory, but it's only the dark points which are consistent with an X uh, in that uh, range, uh, and, uh, and uh, which is due to the fact that uh, the mass of the X grows linearly, in fact, with, uh, with this empty field, uh, and quadratically in the product of both. Uh, so uh, you normally expect them to be below a TV, and uh, the search for them, in short, uh, says that at the moment we don't see any of them below 450, 600 GV, depending on the charge, either it, if it is 5 third or, or 2 third is a real copy of the top. They are not uh, four generation uh, fellows, there are deviations, but the searches for the moment are centered or on effective four generations, and this is the conclusion. So, uh, um, I am close to the end. Uh, Ignatius has already mentioned this this morning. Of course, uh, what if the X likes to be a natural and, uh, and the standard model up to high energy uh, is unchanged? Well, then you, you do a careful calculation uh, of the evolution of the various couplings. So here you have the, uh, uh, the evolution of the gauge couplings and the top, cu top coupling. You have the, the mist crossing, but not that mist. Of course, this is pure standard model, right? And uh, you have that uh, the, the coupling of the, the, sorry, the quartic coupling of the X, which now we know, now we know, we know the starting point, so we know the evolution. This is a pretty actual, actual calculation. This is the evolution, uh, which uh, is, um, you know, close enough to zero that you want to make a, a larger plot, okay, of, the, of, the, of that figure, of that figure. Uh, yes. Um, the fact that lambda wants to be close to zero, relative to energy, uh, is the source of many speculations, and, uh, you know, people uh, are detailing what happens uh, uh, here, what happens here in this other plot, which you can call it a, a phase space plot of the, of the standard model, mass of the Higgs, mass of the top. Uh, this is the stability region, right, of the theory. This is a narrow mm, region in which the, 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 the standard model unchanged up to M Planck. Huh? So there is a change between, uh, with respect to the, 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 this previous case. Here, I just uh, I just run the couplings up to high energy, okay, assuming that up to this or this or this energy there is nothing new. Here I assume that you can extrapolate the standard model up to M-Planck and that there is not even a significant correction taking place at M-Planck, right? You also have to make that assumption. If you make that assumption, this is the situation. The standard model wants to live in this narrow metastable uh, region. There are several speculations on the meaning of all this which uh, um, you know are even interesting but I, I hardly see how one can hope to you know to, to bet, get, get convinced that they are uh, uh, real, uh, real uh, facts uh, or if you want you know some people want to say that the the, the discovery of the X at 125 GV is evidence for this. I don't think so myself. Uh, one, uh, I am very close to the end. Uh, one, you know, since I mentioned dark matter, I want to tell you what I think is the most uh, important happening uh, in, in the last uh, uh, one or two years. Uh, you see, uh, th there is what is called the direct search of dark matter, right? Which I'm sure you all, uh, are all familiar with, right? And there is a crucial experiment, CNON, but forget about the experiment. I mean, the message is the following, that we know since long time, you see, there are two ways in which this guy can speak to N. 
right? Either by exchanging a Z or by exchanging a X, essentially, if there is no other new particle, okay? And we know since long time that, uh, you know, if there, there were a spin-independent coupling of this fellow to the Z, that would be largely excluded by, by negative observation of this reaction so far. However, it is not very difficult to have, in fact, in many cases, there is no spin in the, cam in the, in the non-relativistic limit. This chi is highly non-relativistic, in which there is no spin-independent coupling. For example, a Majorana spin, or for example, one single scalar, uh, one single real scalar. We, we have no coupling with the, X, with the Z that goes to zero uh, the, in the non-relativistic limit that is spin-independent, right? So, uh, this is perhaps not such an, in, such a, I mean, it's not, the fact that we haven't seen anything so far is not so significant. It's very significant that we now uh, are, uh, these people are at, at the edge of, uh, of uh, seeing this coupling. Now we know the mass of the Higgs, we know the mass of the Higgs, and, uh, you know, for typical couplings, for typical couplings uh, of the order of 0.1, which are very reasonable in many, many models, this is a, a, a defendable formula, and now you see the mass of the X we know, right? And, uh, and uh, this is the typical range, and these people are exploring uh, uh, the interesting range for the first time. So uh, this is, uh, I think, the most important fact that has happened in dark matter searches. is happening because uh, these people are improving their experiments. All right, conclusion. As I said, in the gauge sector, I am amazed by a case in which there is a really significant uh, interaction between deep theory, if you want to call it like that, and our phenomenology, in the sense that it's phenomenology that is really necessary to understand what's happened at the LHC. Uh, I find it remarkable. As I said, there is one less question open in the in neutrino field, but there are still many unanswered questions, as far as I can tell, all of experimental nature. A question that is pending is this one in the flavor sector. Can it be that new fees in the flavor sector is around the corner? Because people keep looking for them, and, uh, and, uh, and so... Uh, are, are, they, are they searching in the dark and uh, with nothing uh, uh, to be expected? I, if one buys the logic that I told you, that uh, you know, perhaps there is some scale related to uh, electroweak physics, I think that this, it is conceivable that there is new physics around the corner, if not necessary, in the sense that I said, the sense that I said. And, uh, and uh, you know, on the electroweak symmetry breaking sector, I think the main message, as far as I can tell, is that the view of a natural Fermi scale is still under scrutiny. Um, um, I, I would not be happy if the field went on thinking of, uh, you know, uh, supersymmetries or, 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 uh, or, uh, or composite Xs or, or pseudo-Golston Xs forever, right? So to me, it's important that uh, we, we see uh, uh, the significance of what's happened experimentally, uh, but I think that uh, it's totally fair to say that at the moment the, the view of a natural family scale is still open, and, uh, and uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, already this year will give some significant information. Whether that will be enough or not will depend on how the experiment will, will proceed and the analysis will proceed, and that uh, I cannot tell you. An experiment, experimentalist will tell. I gave you some indication of where I expect uh, the, the crucial signal to be. So um, I think that it's totally defendable and, and still important that, uh, that one uh, thinks that the Fermi scale can be natural. Thank you. raise the issue of the Higgs compositeness. I understand that people have worked on all these directions, but uh, wouldn't you find that the, the small value of the self-coupling that people have uh, somehow measured uh, by the Higgs max now and the vacuum value no, indicates a little bit that it is not a composite, or 
or alternatively, how do we have a chance to, to get some more information in this respect? No, see, uh, how to get more information is what I said. If the X is composite, right, I would find it strange. Uh, is composite and the scale of composites not too far, right? I mean, I don't have to tell you that uh, a, a, a composite object of a scale that is very far in all respect, uh, you, you can call it uh, as elementary. Uh, if the scale is not too far, you'd be surprised if one ended up with deviation observable in caprings, in any of the scaprings that I told you, right? At the level of 5, 5 10%, right? Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that these people would have expected a higher than, than uh, 125, but the 125 is still okay, I think, yes. I said, yeah, I think it's still okay, yes. Uh, uh, I would expect uh, the, 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 the fermionic uh, partner that, that are supposed to take care of the divergence to be below 1 TV. Uh, that may pose problem, of, you know, the, the consistency of flavor with the X compositeness is uh, a, a tricky issue, a tricky, a tricky issue, and uh, there are uh, tensions there, but uh, at the moment, you know, who knows, at the moment I would concentrate on trying to see if there are uh, heavy composite fermions below a TV, in analogy with uh, uh, the, the expectation that the stop perhaps has to be below 500, 600 G, yes. At the moment, we are not yet there. At the moment, we are not there yet there. The limits are at the level of 5, 600 GV. So what is the... As I said, uh, no, I think uh, looking more carefully for composite fermions, right? Uh, top light object, five third uh, uh, charge uh, fermions, right? below 1 TeV, and those, can, those uh, are searched, right? And as I said, now we know that they are about 5, 600 GV. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what uh, these people will be able to do at 8 TeV, but at 14 TeV, that will be relatively easy to see that, yes. Might be, even be enough uh, uh, 8 TeV. Yeah. Um, I have a question. You call, uh, you discussed the fact that we can use either non-minimal supersymmetric standard model or what people tend to call moderate split supersymmetry. And with regard to split supersymmetry, you, you mentioned there is a pessimistic story. Can you explain why? So, yes, uh, you, uh, it's a good point. And then uh, there was no emotion I... about non-minimal supersymmetric model. Uh, let me see if I understand. You see, I, I introduced the, 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 the need or of introducing the NMSSM in, in if one wants to understand the, the mass of the Higgs uh, with light stops, okay? Yes. yes. But if you don't follow that, that, that uh, road, right, and you are willing to buy uh, unnatural cancellations, uh, you don't care about uh, the usual argument for saying that supersymmetry is at low energy, right? You, you go to the MSSM, uh, 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 with the scalar set uh, 10 to the 10 to the 7 GV, right? Split yeah. supersymmetry. Yeah. So th there is no decoupling. There are two alternative views. Is that uh, an answer to your question? There well, are two alternative views. One view is, I insist on a natural theory of electroweak symmetry making. Mm -hmm. In the context of supersymmetry, that to me requires some deviation from the MSSM. Okay? Yeah. And the most likely way is the NMSSM. Oh, okay. All right? All right. But, but, yeah, you are the thing that, yes. You are the, but, but, if you don't care about naturalness, right, and you are willing to have uh, cancellations and so forth, and you, you insist on uh, dark matter interpretation in terms of neutralinos, but you don't care about then you you let the stops the squawks to be, uh, you know, tens of TV uh, or, uh, you know, 10 to the mm -hmm. 3, 10 to the 4 TV in that range, which you remember, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, the, the X at 125 G become perfectly acceptable. And, uh, and uh, 
the only problem, as I said, is that you may lose any signal of supersymmetry at the, at the large hadron collider. That's the problem. Okay. That's the problem, right? Okay. Because, because uh, then, uh, you know, uh, unification, unification or even dark matter don't really want observable particle at the LHC. This is the problem, right? This is the problem. No, no, because you can have a gluino at 4 or 5 TV, you can have a, a, a neutralino at 1 TV, and nobody will see that. That's the problem. That's the problem. But that's okay. It's even possible that they are there, they are visible, and that uh, uh, split supersymmetry is, uh, uh, as I said, right? You see, they, you remember, there was this range. I had this range, right? Yes, I had this range. Now, it's true that uh, it's not difficult to conceive theories in which the, the spermions, the fermions, not the spermions, the, the spermions, sorry, the, the partner of the normal, the, 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 the partner of the boson, the spermions, have a mass which is a factor of alpha lower than the mass of the scalars, okay? So, suppose that the scale, this is the mass of the scalars. Suppose that the scalars are right here, which is, which is consistent with the mass of the x. Then you scale this, uh, this value by a factor of alpha and you end up with uh, 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 spermions which are perhaps observable, right? But if it's here, if it's here, a factor of alpha will not be enough. In fact, I know of people that are trying to construct theories in which there is a factor of alpha square. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right? So that's the problem. The problem is that you may miss the signal of supersymmetry. Is, you know, is, is really a question. No, I, I, one, one thing that I hate is to replace the experimentalist, okay? <laughs> so I don't, it's a question for the experimentalist. But my feeling is that, uh, is that um, you know, the question is whether it's easier to complete this plot, right, to exclude this area, or whether it's easier to go here, right, to extend here. And, um, and I think at 14 TV, will be easier to extend this year. Suppose that at ATV they will not be able to, to, to either do this or do this, okay? which is possible. I don't know. At 40 TV it will be easier to, to go here. That will be definitely be easier. He's, this may be even difficult at 14 TV because the backgrounds grow and uh, you see, this is already indicated here by the fact that there is a hole here, right? At low, at low value of the masses. And the reason is that TT bar, the TT bar cross section is so much bigger and it produces a background that which is uh, hard to, 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 to be. So let me be optimistic and pessimistic at the same time. Suppose that uh, uh, ILC is built. Now, just it's decided ILC, now. ILC, yes. Uh, ILC. I, it's built now with the data that we have now. We, mm, politicians don't wait for anything more. The Higgs is nice. And can we, in uh, ILC, can we see could we see any signal of new physics if the scale was 10 to the 4 TeV? Uh, any th even indirect precision? You mean talking only in the cost of supersymmetry or in general? Let's say it's, uh, split supersymmetry. Or, uh, so if the new scale was really 10 to the 4 TeV, is you, there any you little see, signal? The only chance of seeing, uh, if there is no particle below, you know, because when one says, when one says ILT, one should be more precise. Let's say ILC at, uh, at uh, let's say one TV of, of center of mass, okay? One TV center of mass, which is not uh, the easiest thing to do, right? Uh, and suppose that there is no below 500 GV, right? Because you normally produce them in pair. There is no new particle, okay? Because as you said, they are all above, okay? Then the only chance will be to see something will be to study precisely the uh, X coupling, which there you can do and uh, see something. Now, if it's a weak interacting particle, a weak interacting tier like supersymmetry, I don't think that you will be able to see anything. If it's a strongly interacting theory, right, like a composite X, right, then since there you might be able to go to two, three percent precision in those couplings, right, you might be able to see a deviation. You might be able to see a deviation. But that will not be. That's the only thing. I mean, in the case of a weak interacting particle, 
one has to go for real production, right? And, uh, and um, because as soon as you move them, uh, uh, what, what I said, right? Delta C over C uh, uh, in a weak interacting particle, significant deviation require particle light particles, require light particles. The strong interacting, if the X is composite, you may have some, uh, some uh, yeah, you may have. Of course, that will be indirect. Right, that will be indirect, and uh, and uh, will have to be interpreted. Yeah. Well, do you have other questions? I will thank Ricardo again. And then I leave it to Augusto for the last few words. <laughs>